The following is a pre recorded show. Welcome to Winning in Retirement with your host, Brian Akers, certified financial planner professional and founder of Akers Financial Group. Now, helping you win in your retirement, here's Brian Akers. Welcome to Winning in Retirement. I'm Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group. I'm the president and founder of Akers Financial Group, uh, which we sponsor the show, Winning in Retirement, our radio podcast. Here with me today is financial advisor, Paul Franco. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Brian. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right, man. I, I like to know that your fan club is all listening in whenever you're <laughs> on with me. So it's exciting to welcome the whole Franco fan club. I as catch we... up to the Brian Akers fan club. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't got the t-shirt for that one yet. But, um, <laughs> but generally, the idea is this, is that Paul Franco is here. He's an MBA. He's a financial advisor at Akers Financial Group. He's known for his knowledge, his caring, and in some cases, his long explanations of things. But overall, <laughs> it's a wonderful um, deal that we've had with you here at Acres Financial over the many years. Yeah, well, it's 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 also a long time. I guess I've been here. It feels like a long time. It's been almost eight years. Yeah. So it's it's been a, been a lot of fun um, getting to learn from you and and the other team of advisors here. So, um, and I love helping people. So I always look forward to these these uh, conversations and telling stories, all of that. So. <laughs> yeah, we we have a lot to talk about today. Um, today we're going to talk about lowering the risk in your portfolio. We're going to talk about why you should do this, who should do this, when you should do this. Lowering the risk in your portfolio could be the one of the best things you do for your long-term financial future. And so Paul and I put together this show called Should You Lower Your Portfolio Risk? And we're going to begin with that basic topic. Now, Paul, you got all your notes ready? I think so. I don't see any notes over there, Paul. It's all up here, Brian. I'm pointing at my. You can't if you're on if you're listening now. You can't see it. I'm pointing at my head right now. That's exactly <laughs> the point I wanted to make. Is that we do this all the time. Now, Paul doesn't need to bring notes to talk about this topic because when people walk in the door, and we're going to talk about who should consider lowering their portfolio risk, it's people that are getting close to what kind of age, Paul? Retirement age, right? If you want to be winning in retirement and know that you're going to win the game. This isn't one of those things where we might win the game. It's not like you're, um, it's a close game at the finish and you just want to push harder to win. It's one of those games where, hey, let's get so far ahead, we know we're going to win. Exactly. And then when we know we're going to win, we can basically take less risk. Yeah, as you, that's exactly right, Brian. And that idea of financial freedom is really what the, we're pushing, um, where overall portfolio design, we need to scale down the risk as you get closer to retirement. Um, imagine it's not the, imagine the game plan completely changes in retirement where you've been in accumulation, accumulation mode for so long, um, where now you do need to scale down the risk. Yeah. So we have many, many great clients that are savers since day one. Then we have those clients that want to be a saver. And then there's ones that have never learned about saving at all. It's not been a family, uh, it's not a family inheritance of theirs where they've learned even how to save money. They have to learn for themselves. We love when people walk through the door wanting to learn to make things better, no matter where they are now. Now, this might mean that you should lower your risk, but it also might mean the opposite, that you might need to raise your risk to reach the goals because you might be behind. So the idea is this, the show's called, Should You Lower Your Portfolio Risk? This is not about the current market on today. This is about the way you should mentally handle and plan your finances with your portfolio as you obtain goals, as you get close to goals, as you begin to change what you want money to do for you. So when we talk about first is who, the first thing is those close to needing the money, those close to retirement. And then there's those who have enough, right, Paul? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's all about time horizon and that sort of governs how you should design a portfolio and what the purpose for each of those accounts and when you're going to need the money for that, what the purpose is so that we can invest that the right way. Imagine it's, we need to take less risk if we need to use that money within the next year mm-hmm. versus somebody who has 20 plus years for that money to grow for them. And so I have examples and we'll talk through that. I'm sure today. Um, but I have one example I can give you now. Just, I have a, a client who's getting ready to retire in uh, January and his wife retiring in February. Um, they came in with all this risk in their portfolio. And the reality, Brian, is that the market worked out incredibly well for them and the timing of when they needed to retire. Mm-hmm. Now, because of that, we had to take a look at that and they said, okay, what do we do now? 
And so we scale down the risk in the portfolio and we'll talk about how we do that and, and what mm-hmm. that looks like. But imagine you're going to retire within the next six to six to 12 months. Why take that level of risk in the market you were taking before? All right. You say the word risk as if we all know the, the word risk. So what, are, what is the risk that they face? So when I'm talking about risk, think volatility. So volatility, meaning there's fluctuations up Vi- and down. Violentility? Violentility. Or volatility. <laughs> yeah, vo- volatility. So that idea of your money working for you and making you good returns, but also the, the reality that in a market downturn, that money can, can be lost. And so that's market volatility. So yeah. when I'm saying risk, I think the reality is that your money is growing for you, sure, but it also has the capability of losing. Right. So the risk of losing money. Mm-hmm. Uh, the volatility is good for those that are younger, that have more time. They can buy into the volatility. But those that are getting closer to retirement, when you need to rely on the money, then the lowering of the risk, lowering of the possibility of loss is how you diversify in a way so that you preserve that money for a lifetime. Because you want your money to last a lifetime. We don't want to have the money gone in a, a bad day in the market. Because we have situations, and we can tell you stories of the last, at least for me, the last 37 years of people who hung on to the one stock with all their money and people that hung on to 100% stock portfolios because they wanted to make just a little bit more when they really didn't even need to. So this idea of lost, lost, now that doesn't mean it has to be a permanent loss. When markets go down and they're volatile, they typically come back over time. Some losses that are bigger might take four or six years to come back, unless it's the NASDAQ of 20, 2000. That took about 17 years. Yep, yep. <laughs> Some crazy, it was a long time. Um, but the idea is this. Should you lower your portfolio risk? Well, who should do that? Well, I think people that are getting close to needing the money. Now, if you say, I got money in stocks and I need the money next year for my house, that's an example of non-retiree who needs that money. That's exactly so, right. Should it be in stocks, Paul? No, it shouldn't. And that... That that's an example that I have as as well within the past few weeks where they this is a client that actually lived in Maryland. They moved down to Florida and they'd been renting in Florida for about two years where they've been trying to figure out where they want to buy permanently. Now, we've set aside money from the proceeds of their Maryland house sale, but also they had money they were saving on their own. A portion of that was in stocks and in lower risk dividend paying more conservative stocks, but then some of it was in cash. And so I think it's incredibly important, especially when the market's hovering around all time highs um, or just when you know you're going to need the money sooner than later, scale that risk out of the stock side and put it in cash. Then the next conversation, Brian, is where's the best place to park that protected money? But overall, this idea is scaling down the risk maintaining the principle is more important than getting a larger return. Now, the reality is that there's lots of radio shows, lots of TV shows, lots of of books. There's all kinds of information out there. And what I think people need to understand is where is it coming from? What is their, the advisor or the person speaking their ultimate goal? Now, Acres Financial Group, I want to make sure you know who we are. We're a mid Atlantic based financial services firm. We have clients all over the country Um, a couple around the world, actually. But what happens, the reality is that we started out with an independent company that's fee-based, but fee-based means we base planning fees, money management fees, but we only charge on what's actively managed. There's some situations where if you buy something with a commission, uh, then that would be disclosed to someone fully up front, but it actually would lead to them buying one thing that they hold a long, long time, there's not a good reason to keep me in charge a fee on something like that for the rest of your life. So the idea is this, is that when you hear advertising, you hear people talk, you got to understand where they're coming from. Is this a one product salesperson that are going to try to squeeze me into one thing? Is it a diversified portfolio? Is it the risk level that I want to attain? Acres Financial Group, I consider us moderate conservative investors. We want your money to last a lifetime. We have experience in making money last a lifetime for people because we actively manage, we actively meet with our clients, we keep reviewing, we keep understanding when to lower the the portfolio risk so that we're ready for the next year, next two years, so that any money in the market isn't money you're going to need for tomorrow's bill. That's a big deal, but that's not what everybody offers that's out there. 
So understanding this is why you have a show called Should You Lower Your Portfolio Risk? Right. And that that idea of, and especially with us here at Acres Financial Group, as independent financial planners, we have the ability to say, okay, think of it almost like a toolbox where we can use any of the tools we need for what's best in your situation. We're not coming in with a certain product to sell um, where we're sort of this, you know, you come in, you have X amount of dollars. Well, we're going to put all that in this sort of investment. No, yeah. we want to sit down and actually build out this plan for you and work out what investments, what products, what makes sense in your situation. Now, we call that financial fingerprint, and that's where we start with people. Where are you now? And that's why it's so important when we talk about should you lower your portfolio risk, we need to know about you. We need to know what your goals are in life. Now, sometimes people walk in without goals in their life. We does have to, happen. We yep. have to start there because what happens is this, is that some people come into money and they've never come into money before and they don't know what to do. I mean, the easiest thing when you come into money is have a good time, spend it, enjoy it, and then you start all over again on Monday or whatever day you, right. you run out. The hardest part in financial planning is getting a, a road, a destination, what you want to do. Once in a while, we got to sort of create what we think they should do. <laughs> Especially if someone's younger that comes into a, a major sum of money all, all of a sudden, right. then they need some guidance on things to think about. And so we build a plan that's designed for them. So in this quarter, we've been talking about who needs to consider lowering their portfolio risk. And then we talked about what the issue is with risk, with possible loss. Volatility can actually be bad for some people and good for people that have a lot of time for that money to come back. Acres Financial Group, we're built as an independent financial group to help you where you are, take you to where you need to be. We're local, we're independent. We don't report to a big company on Wall Street or a big company in Iowa. We report to you. We have offices in Lutherville, Forest Hill, um, satellite offices around Maryland, the Mid-Atlantic region, and uh, we meet with clients all around the country and a few around the world. It's so easy to begin winning in retirement. Just give us a call and schedule your meeting, your free meeting with one of our team of advisors. Call us at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll give you a call on Monday to schedule your free in-person meeting. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com or call us at 833-946-7384 to start planning for your retirement now. Where should you begin lowering your risk? We'll talk about this when we return in a moment. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. I'm Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group, a certified financial planner practitioner. I've been with Akers Financial Group since... Uh, day it started. <laughs> it's almost 19 years. I was wondering where you're going to go with that. <laughs> well, I was going to say since I was born, but it's not that funny. Um, actually, I was 19 when I started in financial services, and I'm not 19 now. That's how I do the math. Yeah, that's where we'll leave it, though. Well, when <laughs> no, you get older, young, when you get older, you get real sensitive to the word old, and so you're trying to figure out what is old and when is old. And it's all about how you feel each day. Yeah, there's no there's no sweet spot of when you're 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 always going to be too young or you're always going to be too old. There's really no sweet spot in the middle, is there? <laughs> no, when you're young in a career, like oh, you're too young to understand this. You look, you you act like my grandchild, and then all of a sudden, like that five years later, they're saying, oh, when you're going to retire? Right, right. <laughs> like, oh, I like I like what I do. Can I keep working? Uh, yep. yep. Um, all right. So yes, this is a winning in retirement. It's not the life of Brian which is a different movie. Um, <laughs> the idea is this. We're, we do financial talk shows, and a financial talk show leads to us becoming financial advisors for our clients. We put it on the radio. We have our own podcast. We have our own website, acresfinancialgroup.com, and we keep all of our radio shows there. You can go there and listen anytime, or any podcast um, company out there would have our history of hundreds of shows. All right, so today's show is called Should You Lower Your Portfolio Risk? Should you lower your portfolio risk? And we have Paul Franco here. Paul Franco has his MBA. He's been over around eight years working with Acres Financial Group and is an advisor with uh, many of our clients working with them and developing their plan and leading them to winning in retirement. Now, Paul, here in the second quarter, our topic is where should you begin lowering your risk? I wanted you to begin by answering that completely while I take a small nap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the reality is that the money that we have set aside in retirement for retirement as we get closer to retirement 
the first place we need to either look at scaling down the risk or scaling up the risk, depending on your time frame, is your 401k, your IRA, your Roth IRA, your retirement accounts. That's what we need to look at first. And so it's so important to one, take a look at what you own now inside of that, inside your overall portfolio. And that's something we do when we sit down and meet with you in our first, second, third meeting, we take a look at your overall portfolio, take a look at the level of risk that you're taking and see if we need to scale down the risk. See if we also need to scale up the risk. It just depends on the situation, but it's important to look at the 401k first. 401k and your each of your retirement accounts. Yeah. So when we use the term 401k, we really mean 403b, 457, TSP, deferred comp, simple IRA, anything you want to call retirement. Yep. Now the IRS calls it qualified funds. Qualified mon- funds <laughs> means, I was getting ready to say money and funds all in one word, which is money. It is or, qualified. Or Monday. It'd be Monday. Yeah, <laughs> yep. we don't. We want your Monday to be <laughs> qualified <laughs> or non-qualified. Well, qualified means it has an IRS um, tax advantage. It could be qualified pre-tax. You pay, you get a deduction now, let it grow tax deferred, but you pay all your tax in retirement or qualified to be tax free by paying tax now and tax free when you retire. And that's called a Roth, Rothifying, a Roth, Rothification, which is my favorite word. Um, the idea of Roth is where you pay tax now and then never again. When we're talking about portfolios qualified, that money, you know the purpose of why you invested that money. You invested that in you throwing that money to your own future because no one else is going to do that. People are not giving you pensions as much anymore. People worry about Social Security being exactly the way it is now, or is it going to be a little lower? What's going to happen? The one thing you can do is take care of yourself through qualified retirement plans, but then you need to consider, is that the portfolio that you need to lower the risk as you get closer and closer to your goals? The other way of thinking about money is non-qualified, non-IRS um, tax qualified, having any of those advantages. These are more money that might be in a joint account or a personal account, a brokerage account. It could be any trading account that you have. It could be individual stocks, could be life insurance, bank, anything like that, those accounts have their own purposes in mind. And you also need to consider what risk level to put in those as you buy them. You need to do this properly. The hardest part we have as advisors is when people come in and they say, here we are, and we ask them simple questions of, why'd you buy this? Uh, What's the purpose for this money? And then they don't really know. No, oh, Uncle Larry told me at the 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 cousin cookout. That's that's what we get sometimes, <laughs> and so that that reality. I have an Uncle Larry. Do you? And he's at my cousin cookout. Oh, then there was you that told me that story, right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably was. <laughs> no, that's exactly right. And sometimes you have to be careful who you get financial advice from. That's the easy way of putting it there. <laughs> yeah, my Uncle Larry was solid. He um he was a small business owner and coached me up. Oh, absolutely good. Yeah, he's one of the that? one of the guys um, that I. One that I learned about small business from that made me as a kid, as a teenager want that. How about that? Yeah, well, hopefully he's listening. He probably isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that that idea and Brian the the this idea of non qualified money and that's even even times when somebody sits down and we sit down and look at the overall portfolio. Some people even want to have sort of fun money. I know mm-hmm. you've had that situation happen as well. I'm sure. Oh yeah, where it's. I, I understand the overall portfolio design and we need to level down the risk and protect it, but I kind of want some money on the side that I can just play with on my own. And so we understand that and that's, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, the reality though, is that that can't be for the whole portfolio. It should not be for the whole portfolio. Yeah. I've, I had two cases this year where um, the person was successful with their, their play account, putting all their money in one stock and then, course i don't keep up if they do well with one stock air balance portfolio is not going to keep up with that and they're like oh well, we're doing better performance than you and i'm like well do you know the risk that you took with that and the, the amazing thing is that um, one case they decided they want to manage it all themselves it wasn't two weeks later that that one stock dropped 26 percent in a day yeah and the, the advice i felt like it's like you try to explain diversification and try to explain lowering risk, take risk on money you can afford to lose. You cannot manage all of your money 
and all of it in one stock and believe that's diversified, that's proper for you and your long-term investment model. Right. And that's even even in the situation of indexing, you can't have it all in one index. Yeah. And that's a situation I've, I've come across. And mm. I always like to uh, explain it in a way where concentration in a portfolio can be a big driver of gains, but it can also be a huge driver of losses. So concentration where, means people own a lot of one thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So concentration versus diversification. Yeah. Whereas in diversification, we level out and own multiple, whether it be scaling down the risk um, on the protected side and on the at-risk side, but diversifying the over, overall portfolio, maybe owning gold, commodities, real estate, U.S. stocks, international, have a diversified portfolio where you might not get all the return of an overly concentrated portfolio, but you certainly will not get all the losses in an over, overly concentrated portfolio. Right. But when the market's doing well, everybody gets a little giddy because when a market does well, usually it raises all the ships. The weird thing in the last decade is that there's been seven to 10 stocks that have made up most of the gain, leaving the other stocks behind. And the, the, vers- the versification sounds like the versification because sure not does. every category did well. The idea of diversification is the fact that you will have some categories and not do well. And so like you, you get phone calls, people go, oh, that one stock lost money. I want to get rid of that. It's almost like if you're looking at a baseball team, you have 25 players and one guy struck out four times last night. They assume the next night they're going to strike out four times right, again. Right, right. I'm a contrarian. I'm like, okay, he's due now. I put him right in, right back in. Especially if you, he has an average that's extremely well, and you know you placed him in there. He's going to do well. He just needs some time. Yeah, that's a great analogy, Brian. No, that's that's exactly right. That idea of making sure we own quality. So right. it's almost like in that 25 player baseball team, as long as we know that's a quality quality yeah. individual, then he is due. Yeah. Then that's a situation where yes, he will get his chance and he, he will home run. <laughs> yeah. But that's not normal sports fan, <laughs> right? A sports fan is I throw the bomb out as a normal response with just with one, one bad day right. or multiple bad days. You got to think. Um, but the idea is this, where should you begin lowering your risk? Um, Paul's mentioning retirement plans. So in your retirement plan, you do need to see where it is. Now, retirement plans came up with a way where you mathematically are always lowering your risk called target date funds. Now, can you explain what that is? Sure. Yeah. So target date funds, what happens is you own a mix of stocks, (coughs) bonds, and cash. And so the further out the target date, it's a rules-based index where what happens is as you get closer to that date, you shift the index shifts out of stocks and into bonds and cash. The idea being that you scale down the risk as you get closer to that date. So what happens is, even in those portfolios, we have to take a look inside of those and say, okay, is that portfolio truly diversified? Which I would argue it's not. And so even that's in the, in the sense of US stocks or versus international versus international bonds and US bonds. Ultimately, those target dates, we don't recommend to own those as a diversified per portion of a portfolio. And that's because of the over-concentration to international, um, the over-concentration to bonds, which we'll get into a little more, but we don't believe bonds are a protected source of investing. Yeah. So the idea of, of a functional way of lowering your risk, the concept's not a bad idea. The practice of what it buys is where we have the argument. The idea is that when interest rates are high and they start to go down, that's a great time to own bonds. When bonds hit a bottom a few years ago and they start to move up, terrible time to own bonds. And that's going to be a tough time to make money. In the short run, if rates do go down over the next year or two, bonds will make money. So it's not a bad thing. So the idea is most people in target date funds don't even know what they own. And so what happens is this, there's so many things going on in your life. You're trying to get your money ready for retirement. So all these decisions are about getting ready for retirement. Um, Because when we're talking about your dreams, we're talking about retirement and how to achieve these dreams of retirement. This is what we do for a living at Acres Financial Group. So you don't have to figure out all this on your own. We can help you. We love doing this. Planning for unexpected events, planning for unexpected markets, that's all part of this concept of should you lower your portfolio risk. We know what we're doing and we know how to help people manage the ups and downs. We want this to be as easy and comfortable for you as possible 
so that as we meet with you and pl- put a plan together, it includes that everything's taken care of. It's planned for, and when it happens, we understand it happens, and we're ready for it. We're not trying to take extra risks to reach your goals. It's a retirement plan based on your unique financial fingerprint that determines where your money goes. It's not about us. It's about you. So go ahead and give us a call, 833-WIN-RETIRE, and schedule an in-person meeting with one of our team of advisors. That's 833-WIN-RETIRE, 833-946-7384. Visit our website, acresfinancialgroup.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage and schedule a meeting right there. So go ahead and call us, 833-WIN-RETIRE, or go to acresfinancialgroup.com. When is the right time to lower risk? We'll talk about this when we return with more of Winning in Retirement in just a moment. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. As the announcer said, we do welcome you back to Winning in Retirement. We're glad you're here listening to our talk show as you're um, driving around or whatever you're doing today. Um, you can be listening on a podcast in the future. So from the past, we're saying hello So Winning in Retirement is put on by Acres Financial Group. I'm Brian Acres, the host of the show. Here with me today is Paul Franco. He's a financial advisor at Acres Financial Group. And we are putting a show today we put together called Should You Lower Your Portfolio Risk? So far, we've covered a lot of things when it comes to lowering your risk, like who should do it? Um, Really, what are we trying to achieve by doing this? And then where do you need to be concerned about when you're looking at the portfolios and what to do? And so this this quarter is all about when is the right time to lower the risk. And so, Paul, I thought I'd begin with that question for you, is when is the right time to lower risk? So depending on what your time horizon is, it's likely right now. And that's what I want to keep pushing is this idea of right now, we need to look at your portfolio, <laughs> see where you're taking too much risk, and scale that down dramatically. And so this idea of trying to balance out risk and protect it in a portfolio, understanding that in our retirement plans, especially through work, we're limited with the choices we have inside of there. So being able to look at that portfolio, look at what you have in there. I mean, most a lot of our clients, especially with where the market's been, are now 401k millionaires. And so this has been driven a lot of, of, of because of the market gains that have occurred Instead of trying to gain that next million dollars of trying to double that portfolio and call it a two, three year period before you retire, instead of doing that, scale down the risk and be more concentrated on income. And so I would recommend looking at it right now and look at the portfolio, see where you're at, where you're invested, where you're allocated, and let's work through a plan to scale down that risk. Right. So the idea is when. So what's your answer right on now. that? Right now. So right now is for everybody? Yeah, no, it's it for somebody who's getting ready to retire within the next few years, it needs to be right now. And for somebody that's getting ready or, or is planning retirement 10, 20 years from now, we still want to look at how the portfolio is allocated. And in fact, Brian, we would actually want to increase the risk for somebody who's who's got a longer time horizon. But I'm talking about we need to look at your portfolio design right now, regardless of where you are. If you're yeah. three years from retirement, if you're right. 10 years from retirement, that's what we need to do. We need to look at the portfolio and make sure it's properly allocated. Right. So the main point to hear from him is this. Are you properly allocated based on you, based on your time horizon, not the fact that you bought a 2035 or a 2045 or you picked this when you're 18? It's about right now in your life. Is your portfolio where your money is, where you're putting money every pay? Is it in the right things? Our general advice is that we review this with our clients every year, the existing clients. We, we log in, in in our appointments. That's why we have the TV on the wall. Log into the uh, 401k. They got to bring the passwords and remember them, which sometimes <laughs> doesn't happen. <laughs> but then we log in and we go through it and we make sure it's going the right way. So imagine that if you look at your 401k, there's two ways of looking at it. One is existing money in there. And the other one is your contributions. If you have time, I think contributions need to be more aggressive. We want to buy the volatility and almost wish for more volatility. You want to buy while things are low. You want things down. Now, in the portfolio that you have built already, you might build that in another way. So you might not have the same split between the two, 
because of whatever risk you have, you have to design it in the right way. Right. So I, I have a client that we are getting ready to retire early next year. Um, he's a federal government employee. His um, his wife works at another private company. And so in his TSP and in her 401k, what we ended up doing, they were so concentrated, the S&P 500, S&P 500, and then some small cap and mid cap stocks. And so what we had to do was instead of saying, okay, let's stay fully invested in the S&P 500, instead we scaled down the risk by utilizing the stable value fund in her 401k and the G fund inside of his TSP. And what we did, Brian, was this idea of you're getting close to retirement. We have more than enough money saved. We know that money is going to last you a lifetime. So we looked at G fund alternative, sure. But that idea is that money needs to be protected cannot go down with the market. When we say protected, I mean, it does not have market volatility. It cannot go down with the market. And so by doing that, we scaled down their 401k and TSP overall allocation to about 40% on the protected side. So 40% in the G fund and the stable value in her 401k. And then with the new contributions going in, just to reiterate exactly what you said, they're still going to be adding new money in every two weeks with while they're still working. We want all that money to still be invested in the market. So we were able to do a mix of the S&P 500 the, uh, in the TSP, the small caps and the mid, the small cap, the S fund and the I with the international. And so with new contributions, we didn't do any G fund inside that TSP. We had those new contributions going into the market. Yeah, another, another, I was just thinking about a way to try to explain what you just said. And that is, imagine that you're on the highway to retirement. On the highway, you have a different speed zone. So you might have all gas, you're hitting the gas pedal, you might pull to the fast lane and go. The stock market allocation is your go. Now, the hard part is you've been on the highway and people want to be in the slow lane to go below the speed limit. They're not going to get there faster. Now, in case like retirement, if you go in the slow lane, you might not get there to where you really need to be because you're going too slow. Now, the thing is, when you get close to retirement, you start to pull off the highway and it's a local road as you're going to your house, right? You've got to slow down. It's a smaller road. You're going to need that money. You need to lower your risk. So the, this high idea of the highway hitting the gas means maybe going 100% stock. If we have to tell you about our most successful savers, they hit the gas when it was time, and then we pulled off on the gas when it was time. And that's allowed us to build wealth beyond their goals, um, beyond what they planned on doing. They have lots of choices now. And I call them extremely successful savers because they, they did hit the gas at the right times. Right. There's no world. Imagine somebody 15 to 20 years away from retirement. In reality, if we're talking about money that's set aside for retirement, that needs to be 100% in stocks. There's no world you need to own any bonds. You don't need to own any cash. That money to get the best rate of return possible long term, it needs to be 100% invested in stocks. And that's because of your time horizon. But you're exactly right, Brian, on that road, as you get closer to retirement, we need to scale down the risk. You pull off onto that local side road. Yeah. You pull that You pull that money out of the market and into lower risk investments. Yeah. So this concept of should you lower your risk and when? So the, what his answer, Paul, was now. And now means no matter what the market's doing, imagine that the market lost 10%, 20%, 30%. And you're sitting a week after the market lost that. What would you have wished you did two weeks prior when you heard that you should look at de-risking de or lowering your risk? What would what do you wish you should have done if you lose money? The reality, when the market rises, you sort of forget it. Now, if you've been looking at your statements every month and being happy, that means the market's been going up. You know those days when the market had a bad time, like 08, 09, when you just stopped looking at your statement because it was going down. Those are low months. Now, the reality in stock market investing is when things are up, that's when you need to sell some, lower your risk, and buy the things that are down, buy the things that are negative. The, the common thing people look at is like, I had this guy on an appointment the other, last night, actually. He looks at his portfolio and goes, oh, this one made this 18%, this one's 10 this one's minus 2 Oh, I want to sell the minus 2 and buy the 18 And he's doing the emotionally... The opposite of what he exactly. should do, because yep. if they're all good stocks, which that's one evaluation we have to do, or good mutual funds or whatever inside the retirement account, if they're all good and we like the allocation, then the answer would be trim and rebalance, and rebalancing means buying the low, 
I think that's a great segue into this idea of growth, value, dividend investing on the market. Because imagine a portfolio just two years ago, right, Brian, in 2022, when growth stocks were down dramatically, depending on what you own, NASDAQ, certain higher, higher risk growth stocks were down 30 plus percent, somewhat even more than that. But imagine if you own dividends in that same portfolio. Dividends, when the overall S&P was down about 25% and technology was down about 30% plus, dividend stocks really held their own, only mostly broke even, only lost a little bit depending on what you owned. And so that was a, that was a time when if you had a million dollars all in growth stocks, you lost $300,000, 30% of that money in, in the span of one year. But if you incorporated dividends in that overall portfolio, that portion really didn't lose anything depending on what you owned. And so it's so important to even recognize that on the market side, we need to be properly diversified there as well, owning a mix of growth and dividend stocks, which we can talk a little bit more about. Um, but that idea is so, so important that you don't want to be overly concentrated in any specific certain sector or any specific type of investing. Yeah. Uh, but when you look at the types, you're talking about dividend. I, I always think about dividend. What's great is you're paid to hold it. Right. Um, because that company is making money. And instead of reinvesting it into the company, they pay it out to you, the shareholder. And that's like a, that's a payment. It's you get that paid while the market might be down. A growth stock, they're going to plow that money back into the company, and that's going to be something long-term where it can grow and give you capital gain. And value is where the, the manager is looking for stocks that have been around a while that their valuation might be lower. The hardest part when you're looking at portfolios, you got to look at the now and the later, both of them together, and you got to apply it to that person's exact situation. The concepts of what's overvalued, what's undervalued, that's about lowering the risk. Lowering the risk um, is something where you need to evaluate the overall, and then you got to look at by account and by purpose, and then come back and say, this is the answer. And that's what we do at Acres Financial Group, is we try our best to take that person in mind, have the portfolio design in mind, and what to do. Absolutely. Yeah, it, that, it, yeah, it's that, hard. <laughs> yeah, no, it sure is. And that even in even in just broader investing, this idea of trying to make sure that if even with money you have in stocks, if money you have in cash, with money you have in the protected investments, it needs to be properly allocated. It's so important. You need your portfolio to give you income in retirement. You need that to be reliable, money that's going to be there and come to you, and you know it's going to be there for the long term. If you're around or if you're not around, for your spouse to have that money. We don't want to have a, an if or possible or maybe to be in your portfolio design. Correct. It <laughs> needs to be there. You need to have to portions protected and guaranteed. It's because the best part of retirement is going to be getting your time back. And you like getting your time back when you're relaxed with the stress gone because you have everything worked out. Your time, you know, your time is consumed by things that you want to do. And that's called winning in retirement. So go to our website, acresfinancegroup.com. And scroll down the schedule a meeting section and schedule a meeting right there so we can talk about how you can be winning in your retirement. So go ahead and give us a call at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. R-E-T-I-R-E. We will call you on Monday. Schedule your free in-person meeting. Do you know how much risk you have in your portfolio right now? We'll talk about this when we return in just a moment. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Welcome to the fourth quarter of Winning in Retirement. This is Brian Akers, your host with Paul Franco. Both of us are financial advisors at Akers Financial Group. And we are here to tell you about Agris Financial Group and our big topic today called Should You Lower Your Portfolio Risk? Now, if you miss any of the show, you can go to our website, Acres, A-K-E-R-S, financialgroup.com. Right on that tab, right on that website, you can see our radio um, podcast tab. And right there, you can see all the shows and basically start listening to them. Right now, we're just re- uh, listening. We don't have videos tied to it. I, I, had, I had a client I was talking to the other day that... She actually goes on her desktop, goes to the website, 
clicks on the website on her desktop computer and listens to it right out of the computer. Yeah. So instead of the radio on the, like instead of on the radio, instead of in the podcast, she sits there at her computer and listens to it out of the speaker that way, which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a couple other cases. I'm not going to say this guy's job, but let's just say on his job, he does the same thing. Yeah. And he, he wanted to have a full retirement meeting. So his prep was listening. He told me every show. And How I about said, that? I said, my mom hasn't listened to every show. That's incredible. <laughs> now, we have a lot of shows on there. The idea is this. You listen, you learn, you understand that when you have a financial coach that comes alongside, you're going to prosper and reach the goals that you want. And then what happens is we do it without taking extraordinary risk. And that's why we have these kind of shows called Should You Lower Your Portfolio Risk? And the idea is, let's say you did. You've been all in in 100% stocks and you're reaching those goals and you're like, oh, what do I do now? Now, this quarter is starts out with a simple question is, do you know how much risk you have in your portfolio right now? Is it too high? Is it too low? Um, have you ever had that question or asked that question to a, a client? I would say that that's something we talk about about 90, 95% of the time, especially yeah. this idea that imagine I, I have, I could give you more stories, but this example of somebody like they may be listening to this and they're like, okay, I'm looking at where, where, <laughs> where, uh, where I'm having too much money at risk. Maybe I'm 90, 95% of my money at risk. And that generates that next question, Brian, of what should my level of risk be? Right. What should my percentage of risk be? What should my level of protection be? And so that's an incredible question that we love to get because that's something we can help with. We can help with in an incredible way. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just doing a simple color graph for you. Yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, you can you can send away and do a little cute financial plan or like um, on your 401ks now, it'll project out. Yeah. That's pretty funny to look at. Yeah. The, yeah. You got to be careful of reading that uh, illustration down at the, underneath your 401k. Oh, you'll have X amount of dollars every month to live off of. <laughs> yeah, our, our, our 401k actually has a video that'll pop up with little graphics that are of trying to apply it to your life. Yeah, yeah, yep. and, and it's pretending like it knows everything about me saying, oh, you're going to have this much money when you retire. And it uses like the last, it uses the last 12 months return to project it. So it looks great, right? <laughs> of course, but it, it's, it's not really um, a full planning. Full planning is detailed. It takes three to five meetings. Correct. It's not simple. So, what happens is this, some people in the in the industry, and even myself, you sort of begin with an idea of the rule of 100. Mm -hmm. And so how do you explain the rule of 100? Yeah, well, I, I, I like this idea. Well, it's sort of, in my opinion, an old school mentality of the rule of 100, and now it's more one rule of 120, taking your age minus yeah. the, you take uh, your age, um, or sorry, 120 minus your age, and that's how much you should have in yeah. stocks. And so- that's that's something that was from a um, Baltimore area financial planner, Julius Westheimer, yeah. um, that incorporated that just as people were living longer and as inflation was um, a real concern that we needed to make sure money lasted us a lifetime. So it's that idea of taking 100 or 120, subtracting your age, and that's how much you should have in at risk in a portfolio. Yeah, when I first heard of that, um, I'm Julius Westheimer being a, a stockbroker in Baltimore for a long time, the, the concept to me... There's the idea of that's how much in risk in stocks. And then the thing would be is, well, what's the other way of looking at it? And that would be that your age is about the percentage you need to have in protected and safe. Yep. Now, you can that can fluctuate 20 up or 20 down, depending on if you need more income. I think the more income you need, the lower risk you should have. You shouldn't be risking it if you need more income. Yeah. That's not what people do, though. No, not at all. They're like, I, I need to roll the dice. If, if I lose it, I'll have to work longer. Well, you're going to have to work longer. Right. I tell people, work longer, save more, but don't take the risk. Make sure you have a date when you can walk away. If you can if you can walk at that time, unless you need knee, knee replacement or something. You might need something. Yeah. But the idea is having your money ready to provide for you so it's working for you instead of you working. It's the whole concept of why we want to lower risk and build this out. If your portfolio, just this a quick review of rule of 100, if you have, if you're 55 years old, you should have 55% generally lower risk, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, so the idea of this, Paul, is how often should people review things like this? All the time. I mean, I'd, I'd say at a minimum, minimum once a year. Right. But I, we like to review this overall portfolio design, usually quarterly with a lot of our clients. Um, but it needs to be something that's incredibly prevalent, minimum once a year. All right, so let's say someone's 
once retired 65, they're within five years of retiring. Um, what kind of choices do they have when they look at lowering the risk? Well, so it depends on where the money's at inside of the 401k or inside your 403, inside wherever your workplace retirement plan is. Generally speaking, most plans only have really one choice for protecting money inside a portfolio, and that's a stable value fund like a money market, right. where there's protection on any downside and then your upside is very limited, generally dependent on where interest rates are. So imagine that idea of we figure out how much risk you should have in a portfolio and how much you should have protected. We need to take that next step and say, okay, is that stable value fund the best spot to be parking money, depending on what your time frame is? Or are there better alternatives to provide much higher growth potential on that protected side of investment? And that allows you to take more risk on the stock side because that money that we have protected still growing and that money that we have protected is going to provide income for us throughout our retirement years. Yeah. So you have your options and then you have um, the idea that there's such a thing called in-service withdrawals. Yep. And that's what you're talking about? Yeah. So that idea of in-service withdrawal is somebody who's um, 59 and a half uh, taking a look at their uh, 401k that they have through work and saying, okay, I scaled down the risk, but the stable value fund inside of there, it's it's not giving me the best return that I can get. So we have the ability at after age 59 and a half, we can do something called an in-service withdrawal or an in-service rollover and have it roll out of a 401k into a regular IRA or a Roth IRA, depending on where the 401k is whether it's pre-tax or Roth. And we have the ability to do that without any taxes or penalties. And so that's an incredible way to over to, to better diversify the portfolio. So let's say someone's doing in-service withdrawal. Now you're talking to them about the fees at the 401k and the fees or commissions from anything we do here and you compare the two. Typically, when they pull out to an advisor, you pay for the advisor. There's going to be more fees than the 401k. Absolutely. So an unadvised versus an advised. Now, when people pull it out, and you're trying to lower the risk, what kind of investments would you put it, an in-service rollover into lower risk? How would you do that? Well, so I like right now in, in 2024, now with interest rates a little bit higher, we use a mix of CDs to provide um, principal protection with FDIC insurance with you know, getting four to five percent rates of return depending on the time frame. There, we also like to use fixed and indexed annuities that have very low fees or no fees, depending on the actual policy that makes sense. And that money is set aside in a way that's going to provide principal protection, but also geared towards much higher growth potential. Whether that be tied to a cap, or whether that have some sort of income rider attached that we can use to provide future income for you. So we have a plethora of tools that we can use to provide better ways to allocate that protected portion of a portfolio. Um, the reality, though, is just taking a look at the 401k first, taking a look at your retirement plan first, and seeing where that fits. It's not that every single client should have all their money in CDs on the protected side, or all of it needs to be in annuities on the protected side. We need to have a, have a balance of that. Yeah, so the idea of protected or anything that locks your money in long term um, you should not have all your money that way ever. You should Never. diversify and build it out. So when you think about um, what we're talking about, anything about this show, we're talking about risking your money versus some money that's safe or protected from losses. Uh, the problem is the more liquidity you need, the less risk return you get. If you commit to more time, you can get a little bit more return. But with the uh, inverted yield curve been going on for years, uh, it's not really better to lock in real long term. So we don't like locking in things beyond five or seven years. We love the idea of laddering, the protected side. Laddering means you try to take today's rates and, and save that for the next one, two, three years, or five, and then try to really build so the, the low risk side down. Right. There, out. There's, there's a lot of agents out there, Brian. And unfortunately, I've had situations within the past month when somebody was sold something from somebody where they took all their money out of the 401k, all their money out of the TSP and moved all of it to a protected investment to provide a hundred percent. Exactly. A hundred percent of that money to principal protected fixed and index annuities. And the reality, Brian, is we could not, could not disagree with that more yeah. where that'll never keep pace with inflation long term. You need to have a balance of risk in a portfolio. That's going to keep pace with inflation over time, balancing that with the protected piece of a portfolio. Absolutely. So there's two ways to listen to this show. You can think about it as what's going on right now in your life. And should you lower your portfolio risk? 
And maybe if you're younger and have more time, you might be thinking about your future on a day in the future when you need to lower the risk. And so you hear, should you lower your risk? And their answer to you might be no. Correct. Don't. So this show isn't about, hey, lower your risk. It's not one of those warning shows. It's a show saying, should you lower your portfolio risk? You, your situation. How do you get to that answer? You need to sit down and talk to a financial advisor to, to do this. Now, some people need to hear that they should lower their risk in the future, but not now. You have time. You let the money grow. Buy into volatility. Um, then there's a listener that, that's achieved their whole career. They're, they've achieved everything they need in a financial goal. And now they need to preserve it. The return of their money is the most important thing when it gets so close to retirement. Couldn't agree more. That's yep. the, what we're trying to accomplish with our show today. I appreciate um, a good talk today, Paul. Yep. Thanks, Brian. Thank appreciate you, it. Paul Franco, for your time. Paul Franco, financial advisor at Acres Financial Group. Now, today's show was called Should You Lower Your Portfolio Risk? Um, give us a call and let's find out. We look forward to meeting with you. We want you to win in your retirement by taking advantage of the opportunity to begin planning with us at Acres Financial Group. To schedule a free meeting with one of our team of advisors, go to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com. Scroll to the schedule meeting section and let us know you'd like to schedule your free meeting. That's acresfinancialgroup.com or you can call us at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll give you a call on Monday to schedule your free in-person meeting with one of our team of advisors. Start planning for your retirement now. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com or call us at 833-946-7384. Thank you for listening. I'm Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group, and we want you to be winning in retirement. You've been listening to Winning in Retirement with your host, Brian Akers of Akers Financial Group. Akers Financial Group offers securities through Arcadios Capital, an SIPC and FINRA member firm. Advisory services are provided through Arcadios Wealth. Akers Financial Group and Arcadios do not share any common ownership. Neither Arcadios nor Akers Financial Group provides tax or legal advice. Advice given on winning in retirement is general in nature, and one should seek further advice from their financial advisor, broker, attorney, and or tax accountant before investing. Be sure to read each prospectus carefully to understand all the risks associated with each investment. Examples and scenarios shared are meant to be for illustrative purposes only. Past performance is not indicative of future results.